Boom, what is up Waves Capital? It's Royce Jacob. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about why the saying, don't fight the Fed, is more relevant now than it's ever been and likely will be for the majority of our lives. All right, so let's get straight into this one, you guys. We'll quickly go over the breakdown of the video and then we'll jump into each of these tabs that I want to share with you individually. In front of us, as you have undoubtedly already noticed, is Mr. Jerome Powell, and he is in proper form, right? He's got his boxing gloves at the ready, and he is ready to fight inflation. And I felt this image was especially appropriate for the focus of the macro newsletter that I wrote this morning, which was, of course, the inspiration for making this video for all of you guys today. So, this newsletter does summarize my thoughts on what's going on with the Fed right now. And because this is waves cap, of course, I do have to integrate the markets into that. So talk the Fed, talk the markets, and um, that is pretty much that, okay? But before we get into the macro newsletter, I do want to cover the words that led me to write this newsletter in the first place, okay? And those words came from, of course, who else but Mr. Jerome Powell. This was just released this morning, and we will cover the CNBC article titled, Powell tells Congress the Fed is strongly committed on inflation, notes recession is a possibility. And that's actually huge, you guys. The fact that he said recession is a possibility, of course, the majority of investors, of individuals, even if you're not involved in the markets, could have told you that a recession is more likely than not at this point. But the fact that they're finally owning up to their mistakes and are finally admitting that a recession is probable is uh, is a big step. And uh, it really is, it, it's a sign of the times. Okay, you guys, so we'll read over some key points here before diving in. A few key points, a few short paragraphs, just get the gist of what uh, Jerome Powell actually said this morning. And uh, again, then we'll dive into the newsletter to uh, cover to segue this into the markets, okay? And on the note of the markets, on the note of macro, I wanna close out the video by taking a look at the SPX or the S&P 500 index. This is pretty much the US equity markets overall on a single chart, okay? At least that's my opinion and the opinion of many others. So we'll take a look at the SPX on TradingView, dating all the way back almost three decades to 1995 okay good old birth year so we'll look back to 1995 really zoomed out i want to talk to you guys briefly um about why this recession I, I i believe and i made a video about this already so i'll keep this part quick but why this recession is different than the dot-com bubble and the housing bubble but also why it could be bad and talk to you guys about those downside price targets that we could see over the coming years using history um, and the data sets from historical corrections to our advantage and see how this uh, this new 2022 uh, for who knows how long, 2023, 2024, who knows how long it's gonna last, correction could uh, ultimately play itself out. Okay, so that is how we'll close out the video. Before we get to reading, before we talk Jerome Powell, you guys, please give the video a like if you go on to gain value from it today. Tell your friends, let me know in the comments down below what you think about the markets, about the economy overall right now, and about the Fed's actions and intervention. Always like hearing your guys' thoughts, so look forward to talking with you downstairs. And uh, of course, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Winter time, I mean, winners, it's obviously summertime, but you guys, crypto winners, equity winners, not fun, but that's when the majority of uh, growing as a trader, as an investor is done. And ultimately that's when you can dedicate the most time to learning. So if you guys wanna learn, if you guys wanna join Waves Capital, again, subscribe to the channel, follow the journey. Okay, so let's read over this and then again, we'll get into fighting Powell. Uh, Powell tells Congress, uh, it's not looking good. Recession is a possibility. Key points, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said Wednesday that the central bank is strongly committed strongly committed to bringing down inflation and can do so with its monetary policy tools. That means higher interest rates until compelling evidence emerges that inflation is cooling down. Okay, fixing up his tie, getting a little hot in there, huh? Fe <coughs> Excuse me. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell told congressional lawmakers Wednesday that the central bank is determined to bring down inflation and is the ability to make that happen. Quote, at the Fed, we understand the hardship high inflation is causing. We are strongly committed to bringing inflation back down, and we are moving expeditiously to do so. The Fed chief said in remarks for the Senate Banking Committee, quote, 
we have both the tools we need and the resolve it will take to restore price stability on behalf of American families and businesses. Along with expressing resolve on inflation, Powell said the economic conditions are generally favorable with the strong labor market and persistently high demand. OK, so closing it out on a slightly more optimistic note, but the the bones you guys of these statements are very bearish especially when it comes to the markets because the markets is ultimately a futures market and historically you guys as long as the fed is raising rates the markets overall specific especially tech sectors with uh with an emphasis on tech sectors historically don't do too hot in an environment where rates are raising and vice versa okay so don't fight the fed do not fight the Fed. Draw. Look at me in there. I look at me and mug it. Okay, so don't fight the Fed was the motto of the markets as they were rising over the course of 2021 and 2022. The good old days. They'll be back, you guys. The market works in cycles. The days will be back. Again, learning time now. Liquidity, liquidity injections, helicopter money, and asset pur purchase. Liquidity injections, helicopter money, and asset purchase. Oh, asset purchases on the central bank's dime ensured that the markets literally couldn't lose. Unfortunately, the tables have now turned. There are no free lunches. With every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Okay, the Fed's actions have finally caught up with them, and now they're focused and now they're forced to be equally as aggressive in beating the markets down as they were in lifting them up in order to fight the scalding hot inflation that is the byproduct of their incompetency. I don't envy the job of Jerome Powell, and I'm not saying that I could do better, but it's their job to keep inflation down, and as of now, they look pretty foolish. No one wants to look like a fool, and I think the Fed will do everything in their power in order to save face. Okay, so again, no one wants to look incompetent. No one wants to look like they can't do their job especially Jerome Powell, especially the Federal Reserve. And up to this point, that's what they look like. That is the general view of the Federal Reserve in the face of the average American, okay? In the eyes of the average American, I should say. And no one wants, again, you want to save face. You don't want a tarnished legacy. You don't want a terrible reputation. So that's why, on top of, of course, doing good for technically not doing good for the economy because they are plunging the economy into recession. And somehow, some way, that that cools down inflation but uh anyway you guys again safe face optics are a big thing um optics are inevitably inevitably going to be a big reason that the fed will again take those extra steps take those extra steps a lot of tongue twisters today you guys sorry take those extra steps necessary to combat inflation which again is at the highest level it's been in 40 years which is why in the beginning of the video i said in the majority of our lifetimes okay so, uh, I don't envy, just read that, sorry. Boom, the higher you climb, the harder you fall in the case that things go wrong. The higher you climb, the harder you fall in the case that things go wrong. From an economic perspective, there are a lot of things going wrong right now. And of course, you guys, this does apply to the markets, to charts as well, okay? There's a lot of parallels, life, psychology, charting, uh, technicals, fundamentals, everything. There's a lot of parallels between everything. The fundamental underlying principles um, do hold a lot of parallels, okay? That said, there's always a bull market somewhere. We'll continue to do our best to navigate these choppy waters, and we'll continue to learn and grow throughout the process of doing so. Waves Cap is the best team in the game. Sorry if, sorry if that was a little loud, you guys. But Waves Capital, you guys, best team in the game. Plug time. If you want to know how I'm personally trading through this volatility, through what will be a winner, how I'm hedging, what put options I have to save my portfolio in the case of further downside, how I'm capitalizing, how I'm making money off the downside. Again, puts, hedges, um, what I'm bullish on. If there's, if there's some diamonds in the rough that I believe could confer, uh, could perform over the course of this recessionary time. And of course, if you want my daily newsletters, which this is one of three of. So every day I write three newsletters. This is the middle one. This is the second one. This is my macro newsletter. Also go over some charts here too. Some, some very interesting metrics that I like to include in these newsletters. Kind of unconventional, but um, very useful sometimes. So uh, this is the macro. The first one that I release prior to this is my, um, my trade alert newsletter. And then the third one is my price targets newsletter after the macro newsletter, where I cover some charts, include like five to six charts every given day. And I'll let you guys know what my updated price targets are on some of the most relevant names to waves cap on that given day. Okay. And of course I do also upload price targets from previous, from previous days, along with those updated newsletters every day onto the teachable course curriculum. This is just a 
general example of what that looks like okay so if you guys are interested in joining the real waves capital taking the next step up that's gonna be 15 dollars a month or 40 bucks for every three months um i'm biased i feel it's a, worth a lot more than that but you guys times are not times are not the easiest and uh, i i feel perfectly fine about keeping it at 15 bucks a month or 40 for every three months once again to each their own but if you guys are interested in joining that's going to be the first link in the description box down below and uh, i'll let you ultimately be the judge of whether or not it's for you if it's not just unsubscribe it's no big deal okay so that's that you guys appreciate if you join the fam and if so welcome to the team in advance uh if not no worries appreciate you watching this video let's close this out by talking some uh some long-term s p 500 okay so s p 500 not looking too good right now and uh again if you guys have been part of the newsletter if you've been following along if you've been following the channel for the past couple of months i still don't think things are looking too good especially from a long-term perspective short term you guys there are so many quants there's so many quantitative funds which are like highly technical trading funds um, who are making high frequency trades and uh pretty much like they're, they're just trading okay a lot of the volume that we're seeing right now is not from retail joes and average joes and just people buying these dips that's obviously some of it that's some of the equation but the far majority of the equation is quant funds trading and uh capitalizing on this volume okay so or capitalizing on technical patterns i should say and creating for the volume we're seeing okay so anyway that aside just to say that there could be some short-term uh, swings up, there could be some dead cap balances, but ultimately the overall trend skews negative because as long as the Fed, Jerome Powell, again, fighting, fighting men, is uh, is on offense, that means the markets are on defense and investors for the most part are going to be risk off, okay? That's just historical fact, all right? But let's talk about the status of the markets. Again, what we saw right here, and this is what I was saying, like, again, don't fight the Fed all the way from down here once the fed started injecting liquidity started buying assets that's when you see this okay markets only go up stocks only go up retail joes only know how to make money okay that was this now we are in the exact opposite environment and again the higher you climb the harder you fall and you usually fall a lot faster than you climb okay so right now we are in that fall mode and we are still as you can see uh way like significantly above the 2020 high okay so just right off the bat i think the spy needs to at least and, and this goes for so many things bitcoin was the first example of this reversion to the meat or the revisit of the previous high uh a, a revisiting of the previous high or initial high of the current rally which usually kind of uh coincide okay so i do think the spy will come or the s p 500 the spx will come down to about 3400 at the very least um we could go a lot lower you guys of course think about like in, in 20 in 2019 um or, or late 2018 we were like still at 3000 okay so um aside from the COVID pandemic the markets have been rallying pretty significantly over the course of the uh entirety of the past decade and again you guys times have just been good the Fed has not, has been on defense, has been buying assets for the majority of this time, okay? But right now, again, the table's turned. That's why the market and the macroeconomic environment is a completely, a completely different space. Again, literally flipped on its head from where it was, unfortunately, in uh, 2020 and 2021 when, again, money was just falling from the sky, okay? But again, no free lunch. The higher you climb, the harder you fall. If we look at the housing bubble and the dot-com bubble, uh, before we get into some of these uh, price ranges, you guys, I do want to say the difference right now is that a part of the system isn't necessarily breaking. Okay, so companies are selling off. Great companies are selling off. Granted, they were for sure overvalued up in these ranges. And that's why you see some great growth uh, growth companies down 60, 70, 80 percent. Netflix and Amazon down Amazon down 50%, Netflix down what, like 70, 80% or something crazy. Regardless, great companies seeing crazy corrections. Given the fact that they were overvalued, again, higher you climb, harder you fall. Same thing with valuation, same thing with manic emotional trading and uh, just buying and selling you guys. The more volatile, the more ex the more extremist you are on either end of the spectrum, the more mean reversion is necessary, okay? And that's what we're seeing right now. And uh, uh, regardless, dot-com bubble, housing bubble, there were things that went wrong. Let's just silence that real quick. Sorry about that. But dot-com bubble, housing bubble, there was a part, there was an 
integral part of the financial system that went wrong okay and that is a big factor so dot-com bubble housing bubble a little different than today today things were objectively overvalued that's where it is similar to the dot-com bubble but another thing about the dot-com bubble was that a lot of the company it's kind of like the altcoin market now or nft market a lot of those companies just sta uh, just slapped dot com at the end of their name a lot of stocks just slapped dot com at the end of their name and uh they were nothing okay so the thing about today is these are all great businesses with revenue models with cash flow and uh a very very promising futures and that are getting beaten down so that's what makes it a little different that's what could be the saving grace and silver lining for this but uh, if i'm speaking strictly from a technical perspective you can see here from peak to trough october 2000 collapse of the dot-com bubble to the low we saw in october of 2002 okay so let's say that spanned two years over the course of that two years the s p 500 it declined 50 percent boom zoom in here let's zoom in a little bit so you can see this um oh wait oh nine the housing crisis, the fi great financial crisis from the peak in November of 2007 to the low in March of 2009. Was that a year and a year and a half? Let's call that a year and a half. OK, in the span of a year and a half, S&P 500 dropped 56 percent. So 50 and 56 percent. That brings us to an average on these crashes of 53 percent. Now, all time high, good old 2022. If we take January 3rd, all time high and take us down 53 percent, that would take us to honestly just still above where we were in 2015 and a kind of these these low levels that we saw in uh march 2020 again maybe we maybe we double bottom around here but that would take us to about 2250 on the spx is that possible absolutely do i think it's likely not really given the given uh, what i just said i don't think i think this will be a major correction i don't think this will be a crash and um I do think that this very, very long term trend line, you guys, again, just just looking at this, how many monthly touch points are on at this trend line right here? I think this is a very general, very ballpark area to um, to identify some semblance of mean reversion. And um, I do think it's very possible for us to come test this long term line of both support and resistance, just general trend line that has been tested and proven many, many times over the course of the past three decades again. And uh, in the case that we see a, a decline. Let's say let's say it takes a year and a half. So from January of 2022, let's go to July of 2023. If we see that from current level or from that high right here, that would be a 44% correction. And uh, given the state of the macro, given the offensive nature of the feds, I think that's completely likely. But once again, when it comes to the shortest term, like talking potentially by the end of the summer, I think from current levels, we could see the spy come down another nine ten percent from the, the point at which i'm recording this video which is at about 37.50 i think we could definitely come down over the course uh over the remainder of the summer definitely once earnings come out and probably disappoint for uh, once again for a lot of these big companies um i do think that we will revisit these uh at, at the very least revisit these 2020 highs um that we saw before once again the pandemic uh kind of sold everything off but uh pre-covid highs february 2020 high i do think that will be a reversion to the mean i do think the spy will see that in the short term but long term i think again a 40 40 to 45 percent correction from all-time highs is probably the call okay so that's the video guys once again i hope you enjoyed it always keep your hands up stay on your toes stay vigilant and uh, again if you want to join waves cap and uh really keep tone it down with the youtube videos lately as i'm sure you guys have noticed but uh the less time I spend on YouTube videos, which I still love making for you guys, of course, the more time I can spend on these and uh, love some of that quality time with Waves Capital. So uh, once again, that will be the first link down in the description box below. Appreciate you guys watching. And uh, once again, I'll see you downstairs in the comments to talk some shop. Until next time, always remember, take action, make waves. Peace.